First thing I want to say is thank you for visiting the University of Arizona and thank you for such a great talk. here tonight uh, for our first annual SBS annual lecture and without a doubt this is going to be a very hard act to follow. I just heard a lot about Noam Chomsky um, as a linguist and um, I'm a philosophy major so his work with philosophy is interesting as well. Uh, in the background there are contrasting conceptions of uh, uh, whom education is for and uh, what it is for. So let's take a look at whom it is for. I guess it's sort of interesting to examine why people get an education as far as like what is it really used for, depending on the type of major you have, like philosophy. When we teach children about aspects of science that they cannot yet grasp, then we have wasted valuable educational resources produce nothing of lasting value, and much worse, we take all the enjoyment out of science when we do so. And if you walk around the, the floors of the departments, so students are talking to each other, working together, you know, writing joint papers, you know, or, and, and a lot of very important stuff comes out of that. Well, if you're watching open courseware, you're not part of that. So it is necessarily kind of passive. Actually, there are efforts being made, and it's tricky, to develop modes of more interaction. And it's not impossible, but it's hard, and I hope that it'll go to that. But the general idea is great, I think. So Madison and Aristotle faced the same problem, but they picked opposite, they drew opposite conclusions. Now, Aristotle's conclusion was, we should eliminate inequality, make everyone middle class, more or less. The Madison solution was the opposite, reduce democracy. Uh, so design a system in which the public will not be able to exercise uh, the kind of uh, free vote that would uh, threaten one of the main goals of government, which he said is uh, to protect the minority of the opulent against the majority. I wanted to ask about the two documents you mentioned, the Powell Memorandum and the Trilateral Commission. Um, do you consider that the major reason for the increase in tuition? And what other factors uh, come into play? The failure of the institutions to indoctrinate the young. The failure of this, which showed up in the, active, in the civilizing effect of the 60s, it was followed very shortly, and not only by the beginning of the rise of tuitions, but by lots of other things, even university architecture. You know, it's sort of like, what's the point maybe of getting certain majors, or what's the point of educating yourself, and how does that fit into society? After we've achieved a lot, you know, this country isn't what it was 30 years ago or 100 years ago. There's a lot more freedom, uh, justice, rights, and so on.